here we go. Start the stream up. Knicks go down in the Alamo 120 to 111 to the Spurs. The number one show for the fans by the fans is back for the first of 82. CP from Knicks Fan TV. My man Jay Ellis from the Nick of Time Show. If you're a diehard Knicks fan who loves to talk about Knicks news, Knicks rumors, and post-game live analysis featuring live callers, smash that subscribe button below and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Jay Ellis. CP. Hey, hey, how you feeling, man? How you feeling, man? Yeah, I'm fine, though. Like, it was one of those losses. I know we lost, but I, I don't feel super bad that we lost, man. It was pretty competitive. I saw some good things out there. Yeah. Got some, you know, some non-homer calls against us. It, it was a, it was a loss, but you know, I saw some things. It's tough. <laughs> it, it, yeah. it was a tough loss. You know, no silver linings uh, show here. But you know what? Let's let's start it off. There was a lot of storylines to be had. First and foremost, the lineups changes. We told yeah. the people last night that ISO was going to start. ISO started. Obviously, didn't work out the way they wanted it to. Mm-hmm. I, obviously, it wasn't the most ideal lineup. Fitz that went for um, a complete offensive unit, and yep. uh, we struggled. We, we struggled to move the ball. We shot twenty eight percent from the field, and and it just wasn't ideal. Things changed when Alfred Payton came into the lineup. What you see out there from from EP man? Yeah, man. EP came in there and changed the game. Like like you said, when when uh, ISO was, was in there with with uh, the rest of those guys. Everybody was kind of going for self. It took them a minute to actually get going. Once they did start going, once they did get open shots, though, they were missing them. Yeah. And then DSJ came in. When DSJ came in, it was just kind of more than. Yeah, okay. DS, DSJ still looks hurt to me, man. You D- think he's hurt? He just he just looked, I don't know. I don't man. know. I think he's he's something. He's, he's not right. He's not right. And and I didn't blame Fizz for, uh, for not going to him. Listen, I think... I think, you know, it's interesting what Fizz did with the with the lineup, starting the lineup, because he always said he wanted a point guard to do three things. He wanted him to, to defend, push the pace, orchestrate the offense, and be a threat from point guard. Right. Um, I don't know if you want to look at the change as an indictment on the three, or maybe it's Fizz trying to light a fire under them. Could be. Or maybe he just wants to roll the dice with ISO and, and see if ISO... Could you know he met he could he could be a threat, but could he orchestrate and could he uh, uh, defend well? Didn't work out in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Peyton obviously there was a fire lit under him. Came in, gave us um, excellent defense. I, be, I believe five steals for Peyton tonight. He was solid, yeah. and in turn that turned into to amazing offense, man. Yeah, man, that connection between Peyton and Randall that car- it carried over from the Pelicans to uh, to New York, man. You can see as he, as soon as he got in the game that he just knew where to give Randall the ball, and he also just knew how to run that pick and roll effectively. I feel like the yeah. first game he he ran the pick, waited a beat for for uh, not much for Bobby Porras to cut and got him a nice open look. So I mean, Peyton, man. He did it. He did it on both ends of the floor. He, he was solid, player. man. He he was ferocious, man. Uh, eight eight assists, five steals for Peyton. To me, the the biggest knock on him tonight was his foul trouble. If he didn't get into the foul trouble, we might have had a better chance to win the game. Yeah, it was kind of bad too because it it got so bad that you know you, you were kind of scared to take him out. And then when you did take him out, and Frank came in, yeah. It was like he, it Frank wasn't like, good tonight. Frank Frank was lousy tonight. I thought Frank's passes were soft. His defense, he, he made a lot of boneheaded plays. And again, Fizz took him out. Fizz took him right out. Hell, you know, I, I didn't I didn't mind that. He's playing scared, yo. Like yeah, like we need the FIBA Frank back. Like <laughs> we need FIBA Frank back, back, bro. There was a point. There was a point where they were doubling Randall and waiting for the pass. Yeah. So, and in times like that, that's when you have to kind of move on and either call your own number or at least drive and force somebody to react and kick to, kick to somebody else. He chose to do neither and still try to get that pass ran through the double team. And he, he's he's got to stop forcing it, man. Got to yeah. stop forcing it. You got to think. You got to think. I need to take over sometimes in yeah. certain situations. Rewrite, rewrite that brain, Frank. Facts. Rewrite. 
Yeah. Facts, facts. So that story of the point guards, it was tonight, it was Alfred Payton's night, no doubt about it. Alfred was sharp, and uh, the, the rest of the guys were not good at all. Secondly, what more can you say but the play of R.J. Bully? I'm calling yeah, him R.J. I'm calling him R.J. Bully, R. J. J. Ellis, Bully. because this kid on the road in San Antonio against a Greg Popovich coach team. Yes, it was first game, you know, first game. Yo, this kid, he gets to the line with ease. He was calm, he was cool, he was collected, and that boy was ferocious on both ends of the court, man. R.J. Barrett uh, was a baller tonight, Jails. true. Young Rowan Alexander Barrett Jr. I'm telling you. Gates was killing him, man. It did not matter who was on him. He was going left. Who cares? Yep. Can't you stop it, though? <laughs> At will. At will. Can't you stop it, though? Over you. Or through you, it does not matter. He was getting to the basket and he was going to score. Cot, damn it, yo, yo, RJ's RJ's a beast, man. And even in the that, I love that last minute ISO move where he's like, just give me the ball. Yeah, no pick and roll. I got this to score to score the bucket with the time running out. Yeah, I saw. I mean, RJ had a great game, man. There was a crazy sequence in the third quarter with RJ. First off, him and Peyton were, were that spark in the third quarter that gave him that lead. Um, but there was a crazy sequence where he came in, drove in left-handed, and scored over two spurs. Yeah. Came in on the other end, stripped photo. Yeah. Then came back down, driving, dished it to Portis. Yeah. And then came back and caught Randall for, for a three-pointer. RJ was a dog out there, man. Absolute yeah, dog, man. All over the place. He had his footprints all over that third quarter, man. Yeah. RJ, I man, he's... I, I don't know. He definitely has to be contention rookie of the year, man. Hey, he, I don't he know plays how like that. He has to be. We'll see if he can keep this up because this is game one. It's only right. one game. One game. This is a one game overreaction. One game overreaction. One game overreaction. Yeah. But I'm a Knicks fan, so I'm hyped and partial. Hey, that's you know it. Saying? That's it, man. <laughs> I go, I'm a Knicks fan, so I'm Facts. not hyped But I was very encouraged what I saw from young Rowan today, man. Yeah. Absolutely, man. So RJ finishes with uh, 21 points, 9 of 13 shooting. J. Ellis, five boards, two dimes, two steals. Uh, two for four from the free throw line. You know, it wasn't crazy, but he, he should have knocked a couple of those down near the end. But uh, RJ, RJ was, was solid, man. No, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Um, and then I thought also, it, obviously, it seems like the, the bulk of the, the offense is going to come from RJ. And tonight we saw Randall and Morris pour it in on the offensive end. Uh, 26 points for Morris, 25 for Randall. What would you, what'd you think about the bigs tonight? I liked, I liked it. Um, the, uh, the coach, he's going to have to talk to Morris sometime. Yeah, Dollar Tree Mellow, man. He, near the end, he, he was forcing way too much near the end. He was trying to win it. He's forcing way too much, but even Randall at the beginning, he was forcing a little bit too much, but there's potential there if we, you know, call the right play, get the right synergy going where you can have a nice little reliable offensive threat with, yeah. between you guys, man. We just have to kind of work on it and get the ball movement and, and get the player movement. But I like what I see from those guys. I also liked, I also noticed the coach was kind of, he, he implemented some offensive sets a little bit mm-hmm, there. I saw mm-hmm. all screens a few times. Uh, I, yeah, I saw all, I seen like Randall, not Randall, I'm sorry, uh, 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 RJ screen, Morris's guy, Morris mm-hmm. got a layup. I seen like a double screen on the left side to get RJ going downhill for a layup. I seen some some things going. So I guess give this coach time. Give it time. Give, give it time. You know, it was a, it was a tough loss, but I, I was very encouraged. As you said, you, you, we did see some nice offense out there. The defense was impressive, man. The yeah, defense was impressive for a Nick team. I mean, and once, and once they got that ball, boy, whether it was off the rebound or off a steal, they were out. Whether it was Peyton, whether it was RJ, whether it was even Kev at times, they were, they were going. Going. Yeah, this is one of those few times when it's like, oh, let the defense – Propel your offense. I was like, "Oh, we're are we doing that yeah. right now?" Yeah, they like, they did that tonight. I had to clutch my chest because I couldn't believe what I was seeing for a minute. They they did that tonight, man. And indeed, um, I believe they had to finish with about sixteen steals. Yeah, as a team, and last year I believe their team high last year was twelve. So that was good. Sixteen steals. They forced twenty-one turnovers, JLs, and scored thirty-two points off of those turnovers. 
Against yeah. Spurs. First Definitely. game, boy, hey, that's nice. That that was good to see. Um, here's where I thought the game really turned around. I thought the turning point in the game was at the seven minute mark. We were hmm. up by about um, six or seven. DeRozan came in and started abusing Kev. He scored two quick buckets off of Kev. We yep. called the timeout. We come in. Ellington forces up a terrible three pointer. Mm-hmm. They come back. Lamarcus Aldridge scores. Ellington again gets called for the offensive foul. Uh, uh, then Forbes hits a corner three. Yeah. You have a Peyton miss, then Murray hits a three. That's a 14-0 run. And that was basically it, man. That was basically the ball game. At that point, Julius went out with the cramps, and things just fell apart. We went into hero ball. We went to iso ball. And uh, we were never able to recover um, after that. You know, against a Popovich-led team, once you smell blood, man, you got to step on their neck. And and we weren't able to do that tonight, but but it was a learning experience, man. Learning experience. Yeah, like the difference is, you know, they have a little bit, you know, they have the closer veteran in the Rosen. They have that going for themselves. Yeah. And also, CP, that that little stint where they went on their run, the Knicks missed a lot of good shots. Like they had, I mean, they forced some things towards the end when it's going hero ball. Yeah. But I can count. There was like seven or eight baskets. Is like in and out, in and out. Mm-hmm. In and out. Mm-hmm. It's like some of those go down. The complexion of the of the game changes. Changes, yeah. He was, he was right there. He was right in it. So yeah. I'm not. I'm not upset. Yeah. No. We we were in it. We were in it, man. And and listen. The, I think the I thought the effort was good. And like I said, I thought if uh, if if Peyton doesn't get into the early foul trouble, I think we could have had a better chance. But um, listen, they they gave it all you could ask for on the road. First game of the season. Brand new team. Again, no more victories. But th- those are some things I, I, I liked uh, out of, out of that team, man. Yeah, it's encouraging. It's very encouraging. You can see the benefit of having some veterans here mm-hmm. and having like a, just like a steady head. And, you know, just a, just a know-how how to play. Yeah. Even if I like Peyton, like where would we be tonight without Peyton, man? That's true. That's like, true. Uh, I, I'll, eat, I'll eat crow for tonight. You know, I, I trashed him. I mm-hmm. wanted to see the DSJ Frank uh, story come out, and, and they were terrible tonight. Let's just be honest. Neither DSJ nor Frank uh, looked good at all, and Peyton came out as a dog. And maybe maybe that was what Fizdale was trying to do. He was trying to light a fire under one of these guys. Maybe he knew the ISO uh, being inserted into rotation wasn't gonna, supposed to work long term. Maybe. But, hey, he, 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 he invoked keep what you kill, Jay Ellis. He yeah. invoked keep what you kill tonight. Peyton was killing, and that's what he went to. ISO only finished with uh, with seven minutes. Yeah, you're Off the right, start, right. DSJ 10, Frank 3. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And if you, it is keep what you kill, and ISO had two phenomenal games after being benched in preseason. Yep. See why ISO got the opportunity to do, you know, to start. Absolutely. Because he had, got that kill, so... But see what you can do with it. Now, unfortunately, he didn't. You know, he didn't keep killing. <laughs> yeah. But there's always next game. You never know. Hey, so always next game, man. Always next game.